Hello, everyone. It's another Thursday night. Welcome to SDGC Live. I'm Derek. I'm here with CJ and Jeff, and presumably very shortly, Britt, um, you know, in about three minutes now. Um, it's it's a good night. Uh, as the title says, I think most of us would rather be playing Final Fantasy 16 right now, <laughs> but we have we have dragged ourselves away. We are here. We are ready to talk about some video games and some video game news. We're going to talk a bit about what we've been playing. Obviously, that's going to include some Final Fantasy 16 stuff, which CJ's had access to the game for a lot longer than most of us. No, I've been playing it along with everyone else. I just somehow <laughs> managed to fit 40 hours worth of gameplay into <laughs> like one night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But uh, we'll, we'll do that. We've got a couple of smaller topics to talk about from some, some smaller headlines that have hit over the last couple of days. Uh, and then towards the end, depending on how much time we have left, we're going to talk for the rest of that time about maybe some of our impressions from that Nintendo Direct that was just, was it just yesterday? That was just yesterday. Yeah. So, God, what is time anymore, folks? I don't know. I mean, t- apparently today's 40 hours long because CJ played 40 hours of, of Final Fantasy. Yeah. So, I, I slowed t- t- uh, time down. Just so <laughs> we got that hyperbolic start. time out chamber, spite, man. Yeah. Out, of, out of spite, I just wanted to get ahead of everyone else. I wanted yeah. to be the one who could play. It's the, the, the only SDGC member to play through a good chunk of Final Fantasy 16 <laughs> out of spite. <laughs> the and only also, true Final thing, Fantasy fan on the cast. 100%. True. Because I, I recognize that Kingdom Hearts is a Final Fantasy game. That's the old, oh, that's, no. that's what it is. Okay, also, a quick thing. This I'm drinking that, like, monster, like, the hard monster with the alcohol. Yeah. You can't see it because it's a green screen. This tastes like monster. It's, it it, it tastes, tastes like monster. I'm going to die tonight. <laughs> to this so I'm Holy drinking, sh- um, I have a homemade blackberry gin, um, which is very good. I don't think I was prepared for high, how high a proof this stuff is, though, um, because this is, like way higher proof than standard spirits. So this is going to be enough to really do some damage <laughs> to me. Um, but yeah, we're going to... Our hottest Final Fantasy takes tonight without John. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I was going to say, John is John can't be here because he's too busy playing Final Fantasy 16. He's not, but... Um, but yeah, so um, before we get into the news topics, though... Let's talk a little bit about what we've been playing. And uh, Jeff, I want to start with you because you're the one who I know hasn't been playing Final Fantasy 16 yet. I have not been playing 16. I, w- I will. I'll get around to it eventually. Um, it's one of those games I I imagine I'm going to like at least. Uh, and I want to um, I want to make sure I have the time for it. I've had some games kind of ruined where I just I try to play them when I'm too busy and I put in like five or ten minutes at a time. And I just I can't really get like immersed in the world and enveloped in the story that way. Um, so I'm, I'm going to wait till I got a couple weeks where there's not a lot going on. I can put in a few hours on a weekend here or there. Um, and that's fine. Maybe I'll have some patches by then. Uh, so I've been what have I been playing? Um, I've been playing uh, <laughs> uh, just random shit. Uh, I've been playing Anno 1800, which is a like uh uh ye old timey city builder incredibly um, jeff core game yeah yeah uh, people have been bugging me to play it for a long time it's a ubisoft game so like you know you guys know my stance fuck ubisoft right uh, i'm not gonna cape too hard for them but it's you know uh i know a couple people who who worked on the game one of them's in our discord and uh you can tell it's it's like um it's a very good game and it's in a long time since I've played a city builder, there's a lot to love. There's just a lot of really nice details when you zoom into the city. Um, I like that you can really slow time and kind of take it at your own pace, but it's also like pretty buggy. And I just hit a game breaking campaign bug, so I'm done with it. Uh, I got 75 no. percent of the way through. There's like one mission where you have to um, save some refugees from an island and bring them back to yours. And I picked them up, which triggered the goal to pick them up. And then my ship got attacked on the way back and sunk. Uh, with the survivors and I like built a new ship but now the survivors I already picked them up so I can't get them back from the other place it's um, it, it seems pr- like pretty easy thing to happen it's not like an edge case this must have happened to a lot of people but that's too bad I was enjoying the campaign but there's a sandbox mode which um, I'm familiar enough with the game now to enjoy so I'm doing that one I will say it's like I wish these city builder games they're all the same to me and this is I think years ago, I wouldn't have had the patience um, to learn them, whereas now I, I like a little bit slower pace. But I always get to a point in these where I just like start building shit and then I can't realize why I'm bleeding $50,000 a minute. Uh, 
and I don't want to raise taxes on the citizens. Um, but it, yeah, this one is the same boat. It doesn't really do a good job of tutorializing it. I had to Google a few things. I was really close to rage quitting an hour in because I was like, I don't fucking know what is happening or what I'm supposed to do. Um, but uh, so you're luckily, telling me you're not cut out to be prime minister? Probably not. No, I mean, I you know, I like to talk the talk, but uh, it you know, leading a country is probably. The you know, the I want to. Government just saw your record on this game, and they're like, "All right, fuck it." He, they yeah. just withdrew you from whatever consideration <laughs> you might have had. Uh, <laughs> I, I was about to say, leading a country is probably more hard than we think it is, but I don't know. Last five years, I'm like, I feel yeah. like yeah. maybe I could get the job done. Yeah, <laughs> I made it. Je Brit, Brit's here. Hi, it. Brit. Did I miss the best part? We, we spoiled one. so much of. Oh no, he right hasn't. Now. He hasn't looked it up. Okay. Yet. Oh. No. Thank you. Um, um and then uh, the other game i've been playing on uh playstation plus catalog actually is humanity which is a new puzzle game that just came out it has one of the best trailers in a while you play a uh what's the dog name like a shiba inu um and you're basically it's almost like lemmings and you're just leading hordes of humans to goals in each level and uh it starts out very basic so basically it's like an overhead view and there's kind of like each level is basically a bunch of blocks or platforms and there'll be edges that they can fall off and there's kind of a goal they have to get to and there's these guys called goldies they're just basically gold people and you get bonuses for for picking them up through the level but you're you basically lay down directions so you'll tell them turn left here turn straight here turn right and you have to guide them to the exit and as you get further there's kind of like wrinkles thrown into it so like they introduce fans which will basically lift them up off the platform and you have to use that to cross gaps or um, you can issue like a jump command or a float command and you have to gauge like how many blocks they're going to traverse and stuff. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, it's a really nice difficulty ramp up where like they give you 10 levels of one thing and then the next section introduces a new twist. Uh, one of my favorite ones, which is really challenging, is there's one later on where you can't issue like directional commands while they're moving. So at the start of the level... Uh, you have to like pl pl place all the directions down and then kind of watch your thing play out. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's just a really anyone who likes puzzle games, I think it's really really enjoyable. There's like 90 or 95 levels, so you'll get a lot of mileage out of it. It was um, a really pleasant looking game when that first got shown off. So yeah, I'm, I'm it, glad it you're having a good time with it. Yeah, the the aesthetics just really clean and um, yeah, it's just it's just charming as hell. So I'm quite enjoying it but that's uh that's that's pretty much all i've been playing the last couple weeks yeah brit i know i know once again that your answer is not the big game so uh we can we can move to you next what have you been playing this last week what the fuck are going why like why does my face look so fucking pale i think the light's just real strong on you but it that's is okay. and i don't know why i'll go on the light brit Okay, um, I've been playing lots of Diablo. Yeah. Um, lots of Diablo. You and it's Charlotte delicious. have given me a little shit over Diablo recently. <laughs> it's a um, it's a fun little just like, it's a good like in between game until sixteen came out because I didn't want to dive into anything, um, until sixteen. I didn't want to like get involved in like something that was story heavy or something I had to really learn. And Diablo is um, a birthday present to me. So I've just been trying to get as much money as I can out of that before I move on to 16. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. Um, you know, fuck Blizzard, but. Right, right. Like, Damn, that's the thing. Make a fun game. I don't I don't feel great that I bought Diablo, but like, I don't feel like it's 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 a mixed bag, right? Like we we said before, it's not the same as like the wizard game where you know the money yeah. goes to fund like like that's the most concrete example of absolutely do not buy this fucking game because you were just giving money to the cause of bigotry like right. bobby kotick sucks mikey barra sucks there's a lot of really good folks who still work at blizzard who still want you to buy the game and like I, you know i totally respect people who um who choose to boycott blizzard right now i totally respect people who say that blizzard sucks but like this game looks good and this game maybe the series is important to them like me longtime diablo fan but like they're doing so knowing like and not being blind of the situation right just don't don't pretend shit doesn't suck don't yep. do that don't be a don't be a fan boy or fan girl don't do that yeah 
so but that's that's really all i've been playing that's all i've had time to play yeah i've been so fucking busy like between going to washington and then spelling spending the weekend in la with you fucks like i'm yeah, still know, exhausted right? from that <laughs> still exhausted <laughs> oh god uh it's so funny because the other night you and charlotte both dm'd me within the exact same minute I got a, I, I unlocked like a, a fucking achievement and it was like ally of the bear tribe. <laughs> Both of you were just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Oh, I um, love that. Oh, love that shit. Love you nerds busting my chops. So CJ, I think, uh, I think both of us basically just have the one game to talk about. No, Derek, don't assume. Okay. Yeah, the shit is so fucking strong guys. I was gonna say, Britt, by the way, the um the the gin, the blackberry gin, this shit's strong as hell. I bought um bourbon because of you today. Yeah, what'd you get? Something rose. Four roses? Yeah. Four roses is solid. Like, Four Roses yellow label is like my favorite twenty dollar bottle. I got the um, like the more expensive one. The like single batch or small batch yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 that's the, a that's a really batch. good pick. It's a little on the sweeter side. It's it's hey, it's much, much, much easier to drink straight. Uh, as long as you sip on it. Um, yeah. yeah. CJ, what you I'm been playing? I'm trying to get a bourbon just for you, Derek. I appreciate you. Oh, because, okay, so we haven't had a, a traditional podcast in a while. After Spider-Verse, I went through, I, I had a hyperfixation on Spider-Man stuff, so I started reading a bunch of um. So good, early, that movie's so the, fucking good. It's great. The early Lee and Ditko runs, I started reading them. Um, They suck because Stan Lee's a fucking poopy writer who doesn't know how to write. Love Ditko's uh, writing, so I mean, the art so much. I started reading the Ultimate Line. Um, uh, Bendis is Ultimate a bad writer. Bendis Ultimate is Line's fun writer. early on, but yeah, Bendis sucks. Like Bendis sucks as a writer, but like I love that. I, I do because I like that. I like his origin so much. His origin is like yeah. his Spider-Man's origin is like, and I like all the changes. I like, oh yeah, Norman Osborn's like involved in like hunt, actively hunting him. Great stuff. So then I decided, fuck it. I replayed. I, I I finished like a new game plus run through of the 2018 Spider-Man game. Um, good. Probably my favorite. Like of like the the main like third person like action playstation like franchises now uh, excuse me um and a new game plus it's a lot better then i played miles morales which i had never played i i had it since launch um loved it i think it's way better than the first game holy really? shit really i haven't and see i haven't played the news um i haven't played it's miles good. yet it's, it's a little it's better. a nice condensed it, improved version it the fat combat so much better the indoor sections um, feel like they were built for the game rather than they just like how to. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have uh, fucking. You don't have to play as Mary Jane, so I'm assuming oh, that makes the so game Dollar, ten times better. No, you don't need to play as Dollar Tree Lois Lane in your fucking <laughs> like, the worst stealth, like missions in the entire world. Oh my god, bro! That's my that's my biggest problem with Insomniac oh Spider. Insomni okay, so Insomniac Dollar I, again, Tree Lois Lane. Here's the problem: Insomniac they made the I love I love the first two Ratchet and Clank games. I like the I like these two Spider Man games. Problem with Insomniac though is they're poisoned by like white liberal like nonsense where they think a little bit right, for sure so, uh, this this woman has to be in a in a in a career that is that isn't like acting right because acting that, that like there's no clearly no agency there so she has right. to be like this go-getter girl boss reporter problem is her sections suck those stealth sections are terrible the even the miles ones suck too Again, anything yeah. that and it sucks because Miles is a fucking universally beloved character, but That's playing as him in the first campaign. Sucks. Oh my god, because you're playing like the worst stealth game in the world. Anyway, yeah. so Morales, it's significantly better. My fear now with the second one is that they're gonna go too big yeah. for their own good. Um, which I mean, I'll still play it. Maybe not now because we'll talk about later. Um, yeah. because but like. That's sort of my fear, right? Morale, you know, the the only thing that the first Spider-Man has over Morales is that I'm more attached to Peter as a character, and um, I also like the 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 Raimi Spider-Man skin more than any other skin in oh. either game. Beautiful. Oh my! Bless I took the basketball I, texture, I, man. I, yeah. I took a screenshot and I showed it to my friend who had never played the game. He's like, I thought that was like a a, a movie still, and like, no, 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 yeah. no, it's like there. Um, so before sixteen came out, I was looking for something else to play. I tried Dragon's Dogma. That game's too long. That I was. It's never, a long was, game. It so, is a long game. Yeah. But like to Derek's credit, like it's everything I kind of want out of like open world action games. Like this is basically it in this weird post like Dark Souls Skyrim Witcher world. This is something out like this is like something like but I, I can't I couldn't put time to it. I tried playing. Um, I got a cop and you know to keep up with my like 
Marvel Hyperfixation. I got a copy of Marvel's Midnight Suns. Yo! No one told me that game. No, no, no. I played the first mission. I'm like, oh, this is sick. No I one told, told me you. it's a 60 hour long game. I'm not this touching that right now. This game is so, bruh, but it's, gonna you play. gotta. I'm going to play. Oh, no, no, no. I was no, going to no. say, it's, if you abandon this game, it's hands. Dude, it's, it's Marvel Mass Effect. It's Marvel Mass Effect. It's 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 like, it's, it's like a it's like an it's like when Bioware was good. Yeah, dude, this is this I is, said that repeatedly. So it's like when Bioware was good. I don't think anyone's I'm, getting out the pitchforks for that statement. Yeah, there. it's <laughs> what I want. It's like stupid comic book bullshit, but like with like and turn. I'm not a big strategy guy. I'm not a big turn based guy. You know, with the exception of like certain games, but this. It, it all clicks it all yeah. it it's all approachable clicks. it works oh my god no it's like the and like there's no random like bullshit like XCOM right none of the right. dice the weird dice rolls no it's the most straightforward you're here you will attack there this is what will happen yeah A plus B equals C you know what pick I'm which and, direction you throw a motherfucker like right you know, you know. the only again the, the problem is it's I, I looked it up it is a long game I'm not gonna be you know what I'm saying I'm, I, I gotta like it's, I gotta pause it's it it can be long. It right. can be a lot shorter because like if you just burn through story content, like the level scales with you. So like if if you don't yeah, but have I to do get all into, the side shit, I want, but you yeah, should. But I want to get into the story stuff, obviously, right? I want to get yes. into like the actual relationship aspect because I think that's pretty cool. Even though if it looks a little bit self insert fanfic fanfic y, you know. But whatever, yeah. you know, we all want to hang out with Spider Man, I guess. Um, right. So. The big thing. I've been playing a lot of 16. No spoilers. It's a good game. 40 hours in. My review will be up whenever I finish it. I'm writing. It's going to be over at Game Critics. Um, it's good. It's a great game. In It's the year 2023. A Final Fantasy game will potentially be my favorite game of that year. Um, and I am I am five hours in. I'm I'm not I do I do not have a fucking hyperbolic time chamber. So <laughs> Jeff, I hit 69 percent less. <laughs> Yes. Nice. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 That brought it right back. I told my editor, "Hey, I'm gonna write my review forty of this forty hours in. I'm not done. I made it to sixty nine percent. I think I'm good. Um, because then what? I would have to play until four hundred and twenty hours in. I don't think I can do that. No. Um, <laughs> But man, again, so approaching it from someone who isn't like a big fan, again, gonna keep it very light spoiler and won't get into specifics because I know Derek wants to talk about it too. But it's sort of what like it's that white whale I've been chasing since I played Devil May Cry Five back in twenty nineteen, right? That game's great. That's a, maybe like the best action game we've gotten in the last decade. Um, because like I, I I didn't like Bayonetta one the little I played of it. I did not like the DMC reboot. I have yet to play stuff like Nier, Bayonetta two or three, but I doubt they're gonna feel as fast and as like good. I don't know how like what the word is as like. Devil May Cry 5. That's like that was like that game for me, right? It was yeah. my first true hack and slash game. And I, I think I kind of spoiled myself. I'm kind of done, like looking. Um who was it? Who's the director of the combat director of combat? He I don't remember the dude's name. He but... made he's he made the statement that like this was his masterpiece. Again, he did combat for stuff like the DFC five, Dragon's Dogma, all this stuff. And for him to like confidently say that this is like his masterpiece, and then having played it, I'm like, oh yeah, it makes total sense. This is the best that this kind of game can feel sure maybe it might not be what like true rpg fans are looking for um to that i say i i don't know play something else um but it really is like a like again it's like the speed at which like clive moves and like with combat the actual like the abilities you get no spoilers the and the feel of fights itself it's not padded out by bullshit you're just fighting throughout the entire game and it feels so good every time. You know, it's like when you get into a fight like in, in an Arkham game and you're like, yes, I get to fight someone again after doing some bullshit puzzle or something. This yeah. is that feeling. Every time you get into the, into a into a big fight with like 20 guys around you, you're like, this is it. This I get is to cut loose game. now. Let's oh go. Oh my god, yes. Um the accessibility options are incredible. Like the 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 things you wear to like help like help you dodge like automatically if you need it, or to like to to land certain att attacks automatically or to like heal yourself automatically. If you forget to love it makes the speed even like faster again that's what i've been looking for a game that th that's that fast that like fast and over the top i love it i absolutely love this game this is that if elden ring was like the first true this is what the generation is capable of this is that next step right there could be another major what is it that final fantasy 7 remake the, the the next one coming out maybe it might be it for some people like that's the sort of like generation defining rpg final fantasy game or just game in general 
I, I think 16 is going to be that. Like, that is my sort of... What, 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 what are other games of this type going to, like, aspire to be, right? Yeah. Like, this is it. This is it. And again, it's, it's, it's odd because I, I played Monogre Sod 5 three years into, like, the last gen. And I still didn't find, like, that, that it's bright. At, at some, it, it bumped me out that I think now the PS5 kind of peaked with this. I don't think we're going to get anything as good as this for, like, a while. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. But this but is, like, this is fucking good. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's exceptional. Exceptional. Yeah. I'm uh so I'm only five hours in, right? So I'm not very far. Um I I do love the game already. Um <laughs> like I can tell the combat system's incredible, even though I've unlocked very few options. Although part of that is, you know, I had the opportunity to stream and play like a chunk of demo where that had a lot more options made available to me so that like I know kind of what's coming. Um I I like I mean the, the performance right the performances for all of the the everybody so far is incredible um i'm liking what they're trying to do with like the presentation and the story setup um obviously i am way too early to say much um i i am curious to see what i think as i continue because there's already like there was pre-existing discourse about like yes. Yoshi P making comments about like this being like, you know, a, a, because it's a Western like European inspired fantasy. Like it's a, it's going to be like a white cast. And like, I and don't also, agree with that. It, it's on like the term JRPG or like the actual right. nature. Which I, I, I love honestly that conversation about the term JRPG, right? Like I've stopped using it because like the, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Like it's, it's just a bad descriptor. Uh, even if you don't, understand and empathize with like the pain of people who find that an othering term. Like it's just a bad descriptor. It doesn't even serve a good purpose, but um, like, you know, it's complicated further by the fact that there clearly is like a non European inspired, like set of like nations and like society in the game. And it's like a very like clearly like Persian and like I saw these troops and I was like, that's fucking Persian immortals right there. You know, I, I like, but like it's well, a little Hollywood inspired and the only one I've of those like of the like Dalmechians I've seen outside of armor is like a fair featured like pale skinned dude. And granted, there's a lot of people. There are ethnic groups in the Middle East, right, who are, you know, like, you know, relatively pale skinned and they are not white, but it ain't beaten the, the colorism allegations. You know what I mean? Um and obviously, like, the story is heading into talking a lot about, like, the branded as, like, social underclass and, like, slavery being a part of that story. And, and like, that's awkward to do without black people, but it might have been every bit as awkward to do with black people. Just ask David Cage. Um, <laughs> you know, fucking, uh, what was that, Detroit? Detroit Become Human? Um, yeah. So like Press X to civil rights. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes doing an allegory for like social underclass, like it's, it's, it's good. It's basically, it's been done throughout time, but like sometimes you do it right. Sometimes you do it wrong. I got to see how this game does. Um, the main thing that I'm really frustrated with, and I, I kind of said a little of this before air, but like, Everybody is bringing up Game of Thrones, right? And like a lot of writers, a lot of writers and reviewers that I really like, who I generally have considered media savvy people, keep bringing up Game of Thrones. And I get it. There's a, there's reason to bring it up because they have said that they like mainlined Game of Thrones to try to get vibes off of it. But I think that where that shows through is like visually cinematic cinematographically like aesthetically you know it looks very game of thronesy and that it's a very like desaturated like grand brown kind of color palette the way they do lighting the way they block their shots in cutscenes can be very game of thrones but the story and like the cutscene direction and the and the voice direction is not very game of thrones y'all this feels final fantasy even then like i said last um show there are other movies or other sh again it feels yeah. more conan than it does game of thrones it feels more kind of than yeah 
it's Northman's that, a good a good point North, of comparison. But North, North, so like very Northman, very Conan, very even Berserk in terms of like aesthetic, yeah. right? But what's you funny what? is all yeah. of those are things that are actually like incredibly violent. And Final Fantasy 16, for all the like hubbub that's been made about it being like there's swearing and there's violence, it's not that violent. It's there's some blood. Oh well, wow. yeah, it's like a super. Gi- this almost could have been T, right? I think it's honestly like the the, the swearing, and there's maybe a little bit as somebody who. Who's, who says fuck like every fourth sentence like I'm saying maybe they swear a little too much but it's not that egregious this is not an edgy game so far so I'm curious to see how things go further in because obviously these people have seen more of the game than I have but it's very frustrating to play the first five hours of this game and be like this feels like Final Fantasy to me um, you know and and see every single person say Game of Thrones just because it was listed as like one piece of inspiration. I don't know. Um, Derek, I don't know if you'll agree with me because again, you're actually further in. Doesn't this feel like a weird hybrid of like 360 era RPGs and then like PS2 era RPGs? That yeah. Was like the, yeah. No, like I was, you know what it reminds me of? Like the aesthetic and the art style reminds me a lot of like Lost Odyssey. That really weird, kind of, like but the see, pre-rendered, the pre-rendered you know, like yeah. look of those. Or even like, yeah, like that's my thing. Like just the, the down of the but color. But you know what it actually reminds me of more? <clears throat> is Final Fantasy twelve? Yes. Final Fantasy yes. twelve has go. that super yeah. desaturated grays and browns, very like earth tones kind of yes. look to it. It is like a slightly edgier, more mature Final Fantasy. Um, and, uh, you know, at, also it is a Final Fantasy that takes pra- place, you know, largely in both like European inspired and then like very light skinned, like Middle East inspired regions. Um, just like 16 is like, I think there's a lot of 12 DNA coming into this. Um, Which but weird like, is like people oh, just sorry, play 12, you know? So it is kind of funny how like, and the, the, there's like a comparison I wanted to make to something like Chrono Trigger where like that game was like developed by like what the dream team yeah. of like, these guys. this sort of feels like that's in that same vein, right? This does feel like the sort of all or nothing. Like this game has to be good. Um, because you know, again, after what 15, well, we talked about it off air. It was like, right. Mixed reception at best among fans. Um, 14 is like keeping the brand alive by like, but it's still an MMO. So it's inaccessible to like a lot of people. So this, right. Like here, they're bringing in people from Capcom. They're bringing in people from, you know what I'm saying? A compose, they're bringing like a, you know, the composer, a composer, Yoshi P who's like basically like keeping, like, as I said, keeping the brand alive via like 14, you bring in all these people. And like that, that's like the thing that stuck out to me the most. Right. It I think it's feel- funny how much of 14's like DNA is present in the animations and the like yes. cutscene direction. I, like it, it's it's I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I, I said it before. I, I think the game looks worse than seven, but I think it's only because the scope is like so much bigger that you kind of have to like make some concessions in the way. Yeah, and I, I noticed that since the demo. Right. Like when I when I when I previewed it back, it in was the- also made in like a quarter of the time. Yes. The seven remake was, yeah, you know, yeah. when you have 10 years to make a fucking game like <laughs> yeah, Cloud's <laughs> model is going to look so, immaculate because they've right. been polishing that son of a bitch and for also, 10 years. Again, it's that 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 game. It's unfair because that, that's a PS4 game being up on like PS5. Right. Like it, it's, yeah. it's unfair for me to make. And it's a much smaller game. It's more linear. But like that's that's the thing right like a lot of like and like you said i've seen screenshots of 14 and i'm like i can see where they they pulled from right i can see like what like they're trying to do with like the look of it sorry i don't I, mean to yeah. keep talking about no, 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 cj okay. would never get this but Britt needs to tell me if the if the main character in 16 ever does the like uh the fist bump oh like, the 14 yeah, like, yeah. Well, that happens. That I, happens. Need, I need to know oh, if that. it happens oh yeah. that happens yeah. look jeff that, 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 yes yes there you go it happens. Incredible. So I haven't played it yet, but I got my I got my deluxe edition. I saw. I haven't opened it yet. Should I open it? You can. Yeah, it's a physical copy. How else are you going to play it? <laughs> <laughs> I got it digitally. <laughs> Bro, that fucking monster can't going to kill him. <laughs> Take him out. No. Oh. Derek, I was like, wouldn't let do that. me be John's, fun and show it on stream. I'm, I'm interested if you'd I like to. I guess the fuck not. No, if no, you'd no, like no. Monster to. CJ over here. I was being genuine. Said, nah. I'm saying it's a physical copy. You should open it. Oh, you play it my Jeff, you're uh, muted, bud. God. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> open it. Brent, well, you should yeah. cry about it. If you'd, if you'd like to. 
CJ ruined it for me. The okay. moment's been ruined. Well, okay. before right. we move on, um, so like we're gonna we're gonna have like an in progress review where we you know get together soon and do do like a here's where we're feeling so far in and then we'll have a final like we beat it here's the final review both those will be coming at some point and my review um, will be up at game critics at some point yeah i do also have um before we move on to our little news topics uh finn and i got to do an interview while we were at the final fantasy 16 pre-launch event and we finally got that together and we're going to go ahead and show that here. It's just just a couple minutes, but we got a couple minutes to talk to uh, David Menken, who is the voice of Barnabas and uh, Nina Indus, who's the voice of uh, Benedicta. And uh, it's good. I mean, we couldn't talk much about Final Fantasy because they were under like a gag order not to talk about anything that hadn't been like already in PR. Um, but it's, you know, it's a fun little piece. So um we're going we're gonna to run that interview here for a few minutes and get our shit together for the news topics coming up. So we will see you all on the other side. Hey everyone, it's Finn here from the SDGC speaking to two more amazing people from Final Fantasy 16, David and Nina. How are you both doing today? Uh, very, very excited. Super excited. Buzzing, buzzing. Because we are here at the Final Fantasy 16 launch party and these two happen to uh, be slightly important. I don't know, maybe a little. Would you like to tell everyone who you are? I am uh, Barnabas Tharm, the dominant of Odin. And I'm Benedicta Harmon, dominant of Garuda. And that is the last thing about Final Fantasy we'll talk about because you're not allowed to talk about Final Fantasy. Uh, and, and, and selfishly, I wouldn't want you to because why would I spoil myself? So we're just going to talk about you as voice actors and awesome people and how did you get involved in this project? Uh, well, I had a part actually in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. I played a small character called Magnus, and they, um, what they uh, sort of went. Actually, would you mind coming in and reading for something? Did, did they do that in the session? No, a, a couple like, weeks later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, ha well, I was in fourteen as well, but I didn't quite. I didn't realize that it was like the same team. Well, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, we're just very lucky. Yeah, I know. We're yeah. so lucky. Just, that's how good you are. Now, I don't know if you know, uh, you know your co-host Ben Starr. He loves Final Fantasy and 8 is really? his favorite. I know. He's very subtle about ben? it. Ben? But he hasn't mentioned anything. No, he never does. He no. keeps it all inside. So what? Is, have you, do you have your own favorite game in the franchise? And you can't say 16. The thing is that I am an absolute Final Fantasy noob. Better. Yes. Play so, six. It, see, okay, so everyone says six, nine, ten, and then fourteen, and then they change their mind because then they say, actually, no, you won't, you won't get your life back. That's true. Yeah. It's a deep rabbit hole. Yeah. So. Uh, well, uh, uh, mm, uh, so the truth is that I've never played any of the games, but I am starting with sixteen actually because you can start with 16 and that's what's yeah, so that's exciting that's yeah. yeah that's the best part so first i just need to learn how to hold a remote and then and then she I'm means in. a controller a, a, con <laughs> a controller it's i don't even know the name for names for these things yeah she's adorable it's just you're just that talented that you don't even have to play to be that great at it it's fine that's that's it just you're just good at it yeah uh, yeah I, ca just, I kind of just say i'm happy to provide my voice for games, but I've never actually gamed myself. So. Just press X. Yeah, just I will. A lot. Mash it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're busy. We understand. So we're gonna end with one final question. It's the most important one. Deep dive, hard hitting journalism. In your heart of hearts, cake or pie? Cake. Cake. There we go. See. Scandinavians. Uh, oh. just pies. I never understood them. I never understood pies. I might get loads of hate for this, but it's. It's just never really gelled with me for some Exactly, reason. it's too wet and too gelled. Yeah. <laughs> so before we leave, and no, just don't even think about how they've magically swapped places. It's been one consistent, it's, you know, it's, it's fine. Magic. It's iconic. Where can people follow you after they fall in love with you in 16 and want to become your fans? Uh, so you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and my handle is Nina Indis, my name. Y-N-D-I-S. Y-N-D-I-S. Because I attempted to pronounce that earlier and I was very I, wrong. I've heard many fun versions of my last name, so you're not the first and probably not the last. Yeah. 
And I'm at David Menken, Twitter and Instagram. Boom. SDGC. Cool kids. Go team. All right, we are back from that that wonderful interview. God damn, Finn is good at this stuff. Like I was just saying, Finn can be like this this wonderful mix of of like great and fucking terrible, but he can do those interviews like like none of the rest of us could ever hope to. Um yeah, my, that was fun. My social anxiety could never. No. Thank God we had John and Finn with us to like introduce us to people cuz I just can't I need him to push me up like he, this is my large adult son. Please talk to him, um, but not say that because that's bad. Um, I'll see you guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm excited. It was really cool to get to talk to uh, David and Nina both because like, Britt, you got to talk to both of them quite a bit as well. Just like casually David more so than Nina. But yeah. yeah, but just wonderful people. And like I said, Ben's been on the show before and Ben's a wonderful dude. And we got to meet Ralph and Ralph is cool as hell. Like just Ralph, a good, good, group. innocent, Einstein, Einstein. Is I think that it's just the- innocent. I, every interview I've ever heard has been innocent, but a dude is a fucking champ. Like yeah. didn't know who he was before I went there. And now I just like, I love him. Yeah. Like I played Diablo and I'm like, I met this guy I fucking met yeah. Yeah. In Diablo. And it's just, like, it's so funny to be like, Oh, like, I can hear him sober and not <laughs> wasted out of his mind. Yeah. And I get it. A, I recognize him p- from Game of Thrones. There, there's yeah. the comparison. He's in The yeah. Green Knight. He's in, uh, you know, he's Game in of Thrones, uh, The Witch. Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, who like would make that comparison? Fantasy. Yeah, he is Sid in so. Final Fantasy uh, 16, which is Great who I introduced him as. Because I had no idea who he was, and I introduced everybody to him because he went up to david first yeah and i and would happen to be talking at the david to david at the time i was like who's this lanky brick top from snatch looking motherfucker and yeah, you were like and this is like, sid and i went <laughs> yeah and he goes i, I loved you in great night and i'm like uh, he must know him from something like a film or whatever and then i did the same thing to john john exact same thing i fucking loved <laughs> you in the green night man i'm like what is this is this somebody important that i don't know <laughs> Easily the most famous dude in the fucking building. Um, yeah. Yep. But Hilarious. super chill, super not no ego on the dude. Just oh good ass yep. dude. Good ass dude. Everybody was okay. good. It was a wonderful time. It was. So let's put the Final Fantasy talk behind us for now. We have a couple of, of smaller news topics to talk about before we gush about the Nintendo Direct. Um, Jeff, why don't you lead us off on the first of these? Or I can uh, if you're like no, please not. I just which one is the first? we were going to okay. talk about the, the the E3 first. Yeah, okay. So the um, the Los Angeles City Tourism Board of Commissioners has listed on their site that uh, E3 is canceled for 2024 and and, and 2025. 2025. Yeah, so which, um, uh, I'm sure will not surprise many of us. And then uh, it looks like Kotaku is reporting shortly after that an ESA rep told them. Uh, the E3's fate is to be determined, which is like not super convincing. I mean, as to be a fair, e- the ESA was out here telling people that um, that like E3 wasn't canceled this year, mm-hmm. like up into about seven minutes before it was officially canceled. So, like, I just don't think you can take the ESA at their word for it anymore. Or is it the ESA, or is it Read Pop, or is it both at this point? I thought Read Pop took it over. Um, I couldn't tell you, but, but, but uh, regardless, like yeah. you just, the people running E3 at this point, like it is their job to project that E3 is going to be big. Cause it's a confidence game, mm-hmm. right? You need people to think it's going to be big to want to, you need to buy go. In, right. Yes. And if they, uh, if they go, okay, well, we don't think we can do this, then no one's gonna show up. But like if they canceled their reservations for the, you know, the, the convention center, for two years, like they're not coming back. It's over. E3's yeah. done, I think, right? You know. It it seems like it. It doesn't Which, help that uh, like LA is okay, Della be asking, does E3 need to get out of LA? I mean, yes. Um I would, I would, needs to get out of LA. <laughs> I would argue Summer Games Fest needs to get out of LA. Um LA sucks total shit. It's awful. Uh why? Um you know, but 
like somebody on Twitter said something about like move this shit to Vegas. All about it. Host fucking E3 and Summer Games Fest at Vegas. That's that's a great call, right? The I only mean, downside is Vegas is super fucking expensive. Like, I always heard it was LA cheap. wasn't any better. It's but cheap no, to fly Vegas. to. I can oh. get a flight to Vegas for like 150 bucks. No, nah, I heard oh, I heard yeah. Vegas is cheap, but it's because they expect they're gonna make so much fucking money back from people at you know tax revenues in the casinos and yeah. shit. So like if you don't do the casinos, you can make. But I haven't been to Vegas, so I don't know. Um, you start hosting in Canada. I mean, you know, it's better than fucking LA. Honest. I don't have opinions on that. I can't. I mean, depending on where it is, I can't afford to stay there for one day. It'll fucking Miami, brother. Let's party (laughs) for fucking real. You fucking nerds, get in a real fucking city. Let's fucking go. Give it a shot. Yeah, let's do it before it gets destroyed by a hurricane. Yeah. Damn, Britt. That's so real. That's so real. Since in Chicago, get fucking raining on my parade. I, <laughs> Chicago or New York City would be better than L.A. St- straight up, Chicago might be kind of a, a fucking really cool ass choice to host one of these things, but it's too it's too cool of an idea. It's not going to happen. Fucking St. Louis, like. But no, the Midwest We're going doesn't to get that kind of love. Fucking Connecticut, bitches. Let's yeah, go. No, let's wait, wait, go. Wait, wait. In Wayne's world, in Wayne's world, we're going to Delaware. Yeah, we're going to Delaware. Where Delaware is not real. In Boston, not E3. Uh, Pax East is in Boston. Isn't Pax it? How's East that? is in Boston, and that's good. Uh, it's a great convention center. It's you know, there's a lot of stuff near the convention center that's easy to like walk to for food. Um, yeah, I really like Pax so, East, and I like I Pax West too. Like, because Seattle's the same way. But yeah, like LA's is bad to host this shit. And it doesn't help that E3, like, for E3 has not been real for years now, right? One thing I'm curious about, like, I I mean, I, I think most of you are in the same boat as me, but I, you guys probably have more insight just because you know a little bit more people in the industry. Like, to me, you know, as a consumer or like as just a casual player, right? Like, E3 has just been conferences. And from that perspective, like, it hasn't really changed for me because like the E3 conferences just got replaced from direct ones from like Xbox and Sony and stuff. So like every week, like there's still a week in June where I go and watch a bunch of video game trailers. And that's always been uh, my E3. So like, you know, I hear about like a lot of people like lamenting the death of it. And I get like, it would have been cool. You know, I've only been to one trade show and it was like PAX, which is obviously very different than E3, but I can see uh, why that's such a cool thing for fans, but I think the the big people kind of feeling the loss are the press. But I've never been quite clear on, uh, like you know, why is this a big deal? I guess for you know, so it, it sounds like press are going to miss E three. One big part of it is that E three was on a comparative level a whole lot more accessible than Summer Games Fest is. Summer Games Fest, like first off, Jeff Keighley fucking sucks, right? You can like, only have one woman at, at Summer yeah, Games Fest. He's a, he is Summer he is <laughs> the <laughs> definition of a fucking <laughs> nepo baby, like big money, like industry fail son. Um, and oh like, my god, no, 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 he's not a fail son. That's the pro- well, that's the worst part of it. That's the worst part of it. Max well, Lane yeah, I wish he was. Son. He should Sam be. Sam Levinson not. is a fail son. He, he should be at that level. But the problem Keighley, is he has too many like yeah. Keely's thing. Keely is the like most cynical. Like you get in because you have like three hundred thousand followers, and that's it, right? Like kind of shit. Like it's just very. It is. It is PR by numbers. It is. I mean, that's why we get fucking movie trailers in the middle of the game awards. Um, and the shill his like a uh, gym time at the right. And E yeah. three used to give a lot more media access to smaller sites. Mm-hmm right and freelancers and it was like easier if you were small time to get into E3 and still do your coverage. Um and Summer they Games Fest they also had is women like, doing presentations. Well, yeah, which there's was, that, you know. Um Summer Games Fest is just it's the most like corporate cynical bullshit. Um yeah. And that's not a Summer Games Fest. I mean it's a it's a Jeff, it's a Jeff Keighley thing like across the board, but like Summer Games Fest is just an extension of that. Um so that's why a lot of people mourn the loss of E3. But like even that's historical, right? Because E3 the last few years that it was in, yeah. it was already like games media was getting frustrated with it, right? They've been frustrated ever since it became open to public and stopped being a like press thing, press thing. which was kind of a necessary adaptation to survive, but made it worse. Um, of course, E3, um, 
you know, the, the ESA leaked like a shitload of people's personal information, which was like a huge breach of trust. Um, but yeah, like it just sucks. And, and I think the solution is what's happening is that a lot of the stuff's becoming more decentralized anyway, right? PlayStation, Xbox, Ubisoft, fucking Atlas, Nintendo, everyone's doing their own presentations. So really what's being lost on is for the press to have the opportunity to mm-hmm. like play games and network with developers, right? And like get interviews. And even then well, that, that's that's that, messy because like you know, we've heard from a, multiple guests yeah. before about like if you were disabled, that was never an option for you anyway. You know, depending on your disabilities you dealt with. So, you know. Well, that's the thing. Like, it's so hard to cut through the carefully crafted image from like all these presentations, right? There's no questions, there's no follow up. Yeah. Uh, it's like, here's your hour and a half of, you know, these games like tailored. Like, we, we spent hours and days and months crafting this trailer. And now, like, this Fable trailer, you're going to get this is all you get for two years. Whereas like at E3, you know, you could potentially have like a developer interview or questions or like, you know, hands on with some of the games that are further along. Um, But it's just, yeah, like uh, that transparency, I think, is never going to come directly from them. Journalists have to push to get that information. And that's what they love to do. And uh, yeah, it's it's too bad. It's too bad. Yeah, I uh, it just it just sucks, you know, Um, and I think I think a lot of where E3 still feels big is just like the historical weight of it, right? We all used to get up and, and like be excited for a couple days at E3 conferences. And it's just, Oh yeah. It was like Christmas in June. It was like the best thing ever. God, it really was. You ain't kidding. No, no, like, you know, for a while it was just like, you know, all these like different, um, all these announcements back in like high school when I, you know, was misguided and wanted to be a games journalist. Um, I would always like follow it, right? I always report on stuff like the like, uh, you know, on like Twitter and, and Facebook or whatever. Um, it was great. Now, what is it? So much of it's just kind of lost. Yeah. Um, it's all kind of scattered, which is, I guess, is fine. But like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, half of these directs are the most boring things in the entire world because no one knows to do. No one knows how to do um, what Nintendo does. Right. These whole summer games, like you know, there's a reason why watching Summer Games Fest and the Game Awards is such a fucking slog, even when they have a ton of of announcements, because there's just so much garbage filler, and like Keeley's a bad presenter. He just is. There's no charisma there, you know. He looks like he knows a lot about dinosaurs. <laughs> I know a lot about dinosaurs. Why would you say that? <laughs> Keely looks like he's about to ask you if you have games on your phone, right? I, like, look, I don't want to rag. I don't want to rag too hard on, on this whole thing. I will. I'm going to get black. Fuck it. My career's going nowhere. My career's going nowhere. But look, the, I watched the Spider-Man 2, like, like release date, like presentation. They don't, they they brought up Insomniac on stage just to reveal the release date of a game that we already knew was coming out at some point this year. I didn't know it, but didn't it felt like the most date, awkward. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. But that's right. That's me, me yeah. either, right? But it's like it felt like the most forced and contrived thing in the world. Why go through all that? You're embarrassing yourself. You're wasting our time. You're making a three hour long show feel like it's gone on for four hours. Who is this for, right? Yeah. Why did you show off like some Ubisoft games when Ubisoft had their own direct after? Why did you why did you show off that Star Wars game the day before that they were going to show it off at their own? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So either Keeley needs to do his own E3 or just stop doing this whole thing and let Keeley looks like a dude well, who if mixes. You're, if you're gonna, yeah, just commit. Keeley looks like a dude who like mixes like a sprinkle of cocaine into his fucking Huel replacement, like meal replacement shake and just does that three times a day. And that's how he survives. So I don't think so. I don't think he's ever heard of cocaine. He won't. Yeah. There's that picture of him with crash bandicoot. You're right. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Legally speaking, these were jokes. Um, What was that? That final fantasy thing that like, it just led into like a DoorDash. Promotion oh yeah! Or something. Speaking of Final Fantasy, oh DoorDash God. has your back. Like that's not even. <laughs> Why? That's not What's even a joke? fucking transition. What's... And everybody uh... was like, "Boo!" <laughs> and he was just like, "I know, I know, I have to I'm do a DoorDash a... ad." I'm, Some... uh, I'm such Somebody a, in the background was like, "Fuck you, got, Harley to be fair, You got you got a pizza eating emo in Final Fantasy 14. That was the promotion. But yeah, it was stupid. That's bad. That's stupid. 
That's so stupid. Fuck that. It, was, it was Grubhub, by the way, not DoorDash. No, Whatever, they're all gamer, the same. Guys. I'm a fake gamer. I'm resigning. Everybody who works for food. one also works for the <laughs> other because they're just wage slaves You're, in the fucking uh, you know app economy. You feel good about I'm yourself, just Jeff? saying. I'm you just. Jeff we're a gaming news <laughs> podcast. We gotta have accurate information. Y'all are That's being true. unprofessional right That's now. That's true. I would love to spread misinformation. Bloodborne Two is gonna get shown yeah. off next week, guys. We I need to be accurate, you. like you the fact that it was true. Grubhub and not DoorDash, and we need to not <laughs> spread false rumors like Jeff Keeley does cocaine. I mean, uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> like let's predict whatever, right? Because yeah. they they fucking Nintendo is facts. releasing Super I Mario actually, RPG. I actually once bought like a, a fucking uh, twenty pound block of Tannerite off Jeff Keeley. Like <laughs> <laughs> he poisoned our water supplies. He burned our crops to the ground. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jeff Keeley actually killed my last dog. So. <laughs> Y'all. Uh, Once again, legally speaking, these are all he ordered, he, and he ordered that poison. I kept trying to Grubhub. transition the topic, Grubhub. and I had a really good Grubhub. one, and y'all just fucking coasted. You know, right Jeff Keeley. Jeff Keeley, uh, fucking right. uh, like, launched that you... submarine. <laughs> We're, I'm, I'm moving us along. Uh, move along the good Jeff. Just... The, good, yeah. the good Jeff will move us along. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other small topic we had. Uh, so this. We're all tired of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard case. We just want to never hear about this again. Yeah. Uh, but there, we are getting some interesting tidbits every now and oh then. Oh my that God, aren't, aren't we? Like, that aren't just like make you want to turn your brain off. So the, the latest one came today. Uh, Microsoft, um, the they just began their process uh, against the FTC. They're trying to get an injunction filed to stop the takeover. Uh, but there was a 77 page document filed in court today. Uh, and when the topic comes up, Microsoft is recounting the talks it had with Sony about a 10 year deal to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Um, they said the term would go beyond the expected starting period of the next generation of consoles in 2028. Um, so it, it's pretty cut and dry there. And, you know, we have to assume Microsoft has some decent insight into the, the window at the end of the generation. So. Um, you know, based on this, the headlines running or the, yeah, they, we expect the, the next gen Xbox and as always the next gen PlayStation, uh, to arrive in 2028, which is like, we're, we're going to be at the 2024 pretty soon here. Um, we're almost halfway through this gen. Uh, it's, I just I think, don't like that. Like, okay, that's five years away from now. So it's, yeah. it's not like that's soon, but it doesn't feel right to think about that in terms no. of like a timetable. Especially like considering this. the only games Xbox has released is Halo and gonna be Starfield. When did the when did the PlayStation Five launch? What year was that? Twenty twenty. No Both consoles launched. No, it was God. Twenty twenty. Fuck, it was. It's yeah. been three years already, and we're I like, I know because I bought mine in January of twenty twenty one. And there's like five <laughs> exclusives total. Like, five on a yeah right five and all, they just said that they're all on PC. They just <laughs> yeah I've, you know. <laughs> shit man yeah so um i don't know i think a lot of people were thinking i mean this would be longer than the ps4 gen by a year that one was seven years this would be eight uh but i think but a, also lot people, rate, a lot of people a lot of people i talked to thought it's even like um like our friend sam tolbert and i think a lot of journalists as well you know this was by far the most advanced hardware that had ever launched for a console like finally they weren't running off four or five year old laptop tech um, yeah. These were like reasonably, you know, they were at the time they launched close to a mid to mid high range PC. Um, but even at the car. rate that like technology is advancing right yeah. now, like we said that the last generation dragged on way too long. And maybe that's part of it. We came off yeah. the end of the longest generation ever where that hardware, the base level hardware, the like original Xbox one that was, that was <laughs> so crusty. It was holding back everything. Oh my God. You know, but like we're looking at a situation where shit in 2027 is still going to have to run on the Xbox Series S. You know what I mean? It's going to be interesting. And it's weird to think about, especially so when like, we're seeing a lot of titles now. Uh, you know, 30 FPS. Like even the performance mode in 16 is around 35. Like yeah, yeah, we're really starting to see the loss of a lot of mm -hmm. the the um, impressive performance we saw early on. We're still not seeing you know, consistent usage of the SSD in the like transformative way we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to be fair, like we're just exiting cross gen. 
Yeah, like, other yeah. than Final Fantasy 16, what's the only other true next gen game? Sony's first one is going to be Spider Man 2. Um, yeah, Ratchet and Clank was was Ratchet and Clank was Demon Souls. Um, God of War. No, God of War was yeah was on PS4. We've had a few. We've had a few. PS4. PS4. No, it's the new one. Um, the, the Forbidden new, West. The DLC, yeah, Forbidden the DLC, West. No, the DLC was this gen only. Forbidden West was on both. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Sony has not. The only one. The only Demon true Souls, PS5 Ratchet exclusive Sony's released has been. Uh, um. Yeah. Ratchet and Clank. Oh, well, Returnal. Part. Returnal. Demon Souls. Ratchet and Clank. Um. Yeah, it's just weird because it feels like three years in, we would we would be more consistently like these are games that that mm. need the PS5 to run. Like yeah. and Assassin's Creed Mirage is coming out on cross gen two. You know, what Street I'm Fighter Six just launched and it's also on PS4. And yeah. like you're gonna have to support a PS4 game until 2028. Now you know yep. what I mean? Like what the fuck? I don't get it. And it's especially I mean I I get the install base is huge, but this is also probably the best state backwards compatibility has ever been across the board. Where like everything PS, works like all the you know it, it just yeah it's we've still got a lot of games a <laughs> lot of like smaller games that are releasing uh-huh. ps4 only because like we don't need a ps5 version you're just gonna get the ps4 version and oh what is it like PS5. tmnt shredders revenge launched on ps4 and xbox one yeah initially then they got the ps5 the version. yeah exactly this is i don't like thinking about this it's too my my thing is this like what no, no game has justified the gen yet you know what i'm saying yeah truly because yeah. like what assassin's Creed valhalla spider miles morales like they look good and they run at 60 but then what's next right uh, and like maddie dude in chat makes a good point which is like the problem is AAA development now is like five years is like standard development yes. time on a lot yeah. of games because well, that, yeah. just development times and budgets are out of fucking control. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody has enough experience to actually get projects through in like reasonable time frame. and make no mistake. Like experience is a huge part of that. It is a major reason why like Nintendo and more recently Capcom can get big, like really incredible for their hardware you know, in the case of Nintendo project or projects through in reasonable amounts of time. And this is because they retain people, but almost Mm -hmm. every other company in this industry, people hang around for like one game or two games. And then they're fucking out Mm -hmm. because of how abusive this industry is. So like, you know, it, it it sucks because yeah, it means that we're not going to see games for another two or three years that, really do what Mm -hmm. the ps5 and xbox and i can handle i sympathize with developers a little bit i i can't think of a good example off my head but there's sometimes there's that game that comes out and you're like uh maybe marvel's avengers is a good example it's like this feels like a game from five years ago and it's because like that's how long they take to make five years ago right yeah right and like so yeah when like you know a game like the witcher 3 comes out and kind of changes the way people expect an rpg to do certain things um you know the rpgs that come out the next year are not going to reflect that it's going to take five years and it's the same thing now like i i could be wrong i still look at most games i am positive final fantasy 16 at some point was running on a playstation 4 um that that feels like a game that at some point, you know, probably pretty early on was scoped for both and they made the decision to cut it and focus on pieces. But I do not believe that was built from the ground up only with PS5 in mind. No, right. Um, say even Spider-Man 2 coming out this this later this year. At some point, I'm sure they were having talks. I I think it, it was in scope for PS4 at one point. Like we won't see those true games. Um, they're probably just beginning development now, really. And yeah. it's going to be... <laughs> And that's yeah, also it hard to think time. about because like we're about to have this fucking rock steady suicide squad game come out next year. That's going <laughs> right? to be, I forgot it's, about that. It's a, it's a game that is like, it's, it's almost the perfect example of what we're talking about, right? Yeah. It's like 2017 a game, game ever. It made. Is, it's a game that was designed to cash in on like destiny getting big, like years ago. And they, by the time they were ready to reveal this game, 70% of people who worked in that, the fucking janitor in that office was like, oh, this isn't going to go over well. And it didn't. <laughs> and then they had to delay it further. Like, you're really only you're yeah. going to put this game six more months away, like, from the time that it would have made sense. It just sucks, you know? 
Um, so like, yeah, it it feels weird that both to say that 2028 seems too soon, but also that games are not going to feel like PS5 and Xbox Series mm-hmm. X games for another couple of years. Ugh. And realistically, any studio that just released a big game this year, their next game might be launching with the next generation. Or close to it, yeah. Like what, so. Respawn's next Star Wars game is going to be like, what, end of this gen for sure, 100%. Yeah. 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 And like they say, like Rar was saying in chat, like imagine four years into dev, realizing that a game's no longer what people want, how do you even fix that? And like the problem is if you try, you just end up with an FF fifteen, right? Like because you will if you have a game if you have a game with a four or five year development cycle, as long as you are chasing trends, you are always going to end up a couple years in going, this no longer works. We've got to scrap half of what we have and you're mm. never going to get there. You're going to have a Duke Nukem forever. You know, yeah. you you just need to have good, like talented and experienced and like experience is probably more important than talent in this case. Right. Yeah. right. Um, so it's sad that that's the thing this industry is lacking, but like experienced creatives and project managers going early on, like this is the thing we think will be good. And for publishers to trust in their vision rather than going, okay, but how will we compete with Fortnite? Mm-hmm. You know? So fuck 2028. I don't even want to think about the year 2028. I'm not going to make it that far. How about this year? We're getting two new Mario games. We want to talk about that direct? God, we do. We got to talk about this direct because this direct was surprisingly meaty. I do love that me and CJ and John went live the night before to like bullshit some predictions and just nothing we said fucking matter. It's really impressive. Really quickly. I I just have to point out because I, this gives me so much joy. Somebody sent me a screenshot of John's Twitter. Uh, I love John to death, but John buys into most insider rumors. And John hype. is so bad. To, John, want, to fault, John wants feel... to do direct predictions so that he yeah. can repeat all the things that have been DM to him. And, and, like... he believe, and, and he just wants to believe so hard because he, he just wants the things that I, I it's so like, I love it, but I just think it's funny. They, the, the screenshot was him explicitly saying there's not a fucking chance. Super Mario. The one rumor he chose not to believe was the to Super be Mario fair, RPG. I, yeah. I, I did the same thing, but the thing is I even said when I was like, there's a 0% chance of this, but if it fucking happens, I will be popping off. And uh-huh. then as soon as it was revealed, I called myself out, right? I didn't <laughs> wait for somebody to catch me lacking. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but man, and like we were all sure Metroid prime four was going to be there. And Really? I just, that game, well, God fucking damn. At some <laughs> point, that game, ha- yeah. they have to show, the the only Metroid Prime 4 we've seen was, was a logo. What is this, six or seven years ago now? Is it, I'm just curious, is it because the remaster came out this year? That's why we were thinking like- I think it's, it's a big part to, of it. I think yeah. Nintendo has also said that it's on their fiscal year for this year too. So oh, okay. I figured it would be their holiday game. Uh, it mm. could be an early spring thing, maybe time to the launch a new hardware Maybe don't fucking know, but like Super Mario RPG is their like one of their is probably their big holiday game. Like that's November. That's huge. You know, God, that is wild to see. Mm-hmm. Like, cause there's that. Um, we got they shadow dropped Pikmin one and two. Which, by the way, look, I know, I know, I have I have shilled Pikmin so hard on this fucking podcast, but. All three Pikmin games are so good, and they're all on Switch, and you should play them. No, good. You know what, everything. Derek? I, I will yeah. play. I will at least play Pikmin one just for you. Does, yeah, Derek, it's good. Doesn't look like my thing. I'm good, man. I'm it's, happy for man, you. Man, I don't know. Look, it's it's he, <laughs> look. Try it. I don't know what to tell you, man. No Pikmin one recommend is, me. No one recommend me games. <laughs> Pikmin would be. A, you're a weird case, man. But like, Pikmin is so good, and I'm glad to see one and two on Switch. And three is incredible. All three are great. All three stand out. There's not like one that I would say is like the mm-hmm. good one because they're so different. Um, four and is going to be incredible. Um, can we talk about the direct first one? Because I wa- I yeah. watched it after it because I couldn't watch. That's it live. an interesting choice because you got hit with some weird reactions before you even saw it. Then, uh, yeah. So what I well I knew everything that was going to happen, but I watched the whole thing because I wanted to see the actual trailers. Um, 
What the fuck was Koizumi doing with that weird like? What do you do like th th those weird skits in between the thing? Is that a, does that happen during directs? There, I've never watched the direct in its entirety. That was a little a little much. It was a little oh, forced. Um, hey, it's usually not that. We're, heavy, he, we're, we're being serious now. Show me Elephant Mario or not. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all right, stop playing around right now. Um, so stop playing with my heart and show, show me the me Republican show, Mario. Um, obviously, like I, I, I what's weird is the directs are funny because like. We all either love them or hate them. I, I never got the whole like it has to be one way or the other. Most of them are bad, but they're consistent. They're short, and they have at least one or two highlights. This one just so happened to have like at least four or five, right? There's yeah. some really good stuff. It's like, a good one. Mario There's RPG. a lot of stuff we already knew. Like yes. it was, and that's the thing. I tried to warn people, right? You're gonna see Sonic Superstars. You're gonna fucking see, you know, uh, like a Persona Hot game. I was unleashed. Was there? We already knew about that a while ago. Yeah, like, yeah stuff like You're that. You're gonna see these things, and that's fine. But like, we got Super Mario RPG. We got you know some Pikmin one and two shadow drops. We got more info on the MGS collection that was really good. Um, we got a new 2D Mario game. We got an announcement of a new like so Princess Peach uh, solo. That game. was um, the weirdest reveal. Yeah, because they seen in a while they were like no title, no mechanics. We're making it. Here's thirty sec. Here's like and they were like here she is on the stage. Of footage. So is it What's RPG? This? Not gonna is tell you. A, is it a brawler? Is it a platform? My thing is why didn't they just remake Super Princess Peach uh, on the DS? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know that the the game were. Uh, I, I don't know, man. We're gonna. I, I don't think I'm allowed to have opinions on Super Princess Peach. I would love to play. It's one of the few. <laughs> Brit's games looking I at me you like. Played it? Brit, it's legit. Look. Have you am, played Super yeah, Princess Peach? I, I have. I, I enjoyed no, 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 it. No, CJ. I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking bad. the young one on this podcast. No, I've, I've been dying to. It's a 2D. It's a 2D Mario. Do you game realize all of her superpower abilities are based on emotions? That's me. Yeah, it's not ideal, <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm down. I've, I I've try heard it. other women I know who play games call it the like get frustrated that it's the game that gives her PMS powers, oh, which is sure. like, you know, that's pretty damning criticism from from other women. Um, I mean, let's, but, hey, let's let's have a fun game. Let's just let's let's let's, let's, let's all debate the uh, majority gender that worked. Uh, no, 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 CJ, you want to you want to talk about <laughs> Princess Peach? Let's I've talk about Princess Peach. I don't it, know anything about was it. Was this development team? Did they come off Battle Tanks or did did they go on to do that <laughs> after? <laughs> <laughs> Brit, here's my thing i don't i know nothing about the game all i know is that it's a 2d platformer and it's set in the mario world those are like two things that i love to death all right so if it's bad i'm sorry i hope this new one is good if it's good i wish there was a way for me to play it on like on modern har uh, hardware my thing is this new one like showed nothing like is it a, <laughs> is is she's a in search of the vibe scepter <laughs> Check the check the fucking sock drawer. I don't know what to tell you. In her own game. It's true. The umbrella is the one that gives her powers. I really thought Not... that joke was gonna get more of a reaction. I, I, no, but... no, I, I heard it. But I want you to, I want you to sit on that and, and ask yourself if you're proud of, of of what you said, Derek. I am. We're professional here. Keep your Koizumi like. Sorry, Britt. You were saying about the umbrella. No, you're over the umbrella. Yeah, Super Princess Peach sucks. I really hope they nail it with this new one. They need to. I feel like I feel like like the Mario movie made what 1.3 billy and and like people really latched on to Peach in that movie. So like they just need to. They need like you can't you can't fuck that up, man. You can't. Um what else was there? We got we got Dragon Quest Monsters. That's only me, I think. Don lost his shit with some Jap, like some old JRPG uh, Star Ocean remake. Oh Star yeah, Ocean yeah, the Star Ocean remake. Two remake. Sure, yeah, sure. The first one. Man, it's they're 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 good. I mean, I don't know. There's there's so many like old like Star Ocean Two is really good. I I haven't played it since I was real little, and I just never formed strong connections to it. But it looks really pretty. I don't know. You can only see so many like HD 2D, uh, uh like retro RPGs you never played or are connected to before they all start to feel the same. Unfortunately, Eric, John's <laughs> not here. Let's let's all talk about our honest opinions of the HD 2D art style. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> I like it. I just don't. Yeah. You know. 
I mean, I, I, I have the first one. I'm with one Derek. Down, I have no connection or like experience with these games. I'm like, yeah, this, this could have been that Soikoden remake or, yeah. Like, you, know, you could have put three. literally any label on it and I would be like, yeah, yeah that's correct. Because like, it's almost, <laughs> I hate to say it, it's almost like stripping some of the visual identity from some of these older RPGs. Um, but mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm not the right person to say that, but yeah, I don't know. What else got shown off? Um, it looks like, pretty. It's, um, I don't know. We did still did not get a Wind Waker HD port. They're not going to cannibalize uh, Tears of the Kingdom's like you know what I'm saying? We meant something like this year. That that's gonna sell. Like Derek said, it's gonna sell like gangbusters on, during Christmas. Yeah. Uh we yeah. got another Detective Pikachu game. So oh man, old, yeah. Any what? six is year that olds a watching. Deal? Any six year olds watching know. the the, the, the stream. <laughs> um, we're happy for you. There's uh, so many games that it was like, this is a big deal to somebody, I guess, but it's not me. But like I recognize because mm-hmm. I'm the dude flipping out over Pikmin one and two shadow dropping on switch right so like i'm yeah. not allowed to say anybody is you know i don't know um because like i said also like again I-, I brought up dragon quest monsters which looks budget as hell but oh man bro i'm, I'm gonna be in. there day one I'm it's gonna be it's gonna be super charming it's gonna be i'm gonna feel more satisfied with that than i have with a pokemon game in ages for sure uh, it's probably going to run at higher than 10 frames per second, so that'll help. Won't make me nauseous. Um, yeah, like... It just... It, this, was, this was a weird direct because... I, it also feels like a lot of what they were trading on is old stuff remastered and remade, right? Between, like... yeah. Super Mario RPG remake, which is cool, but it's a remake and like remasters the, um, and the Luigi's the Mansion remaster and they've been well even going back to like well the Metroid Prime remaster it does feel like they've been doing a lot of those lately and I wonder if like I mean people in chat I think we're saying like a lot of people think Metroid Prime 4 at this point might be a Switch 2 launch game whether that's next year or the year after like I wonder if they've moved a lot of their primary development to that and that's why we're seeing so many um i don't know if there's anything wrong like I'll, I'll take remakes and remasters especially a lot of these games that aren't really accessible now but uh it does feel like that's been a, a trend lately like obviously tears of the kingdom came out but like i'm trying to think of like huge like really new nintendo games in the last 12 months yeah i mean at zelda right and like well, to we, be we, clear and got a remaster announced as well yeah but to be clear, like they could announce nothing else, and like Zelda's gonna mm-hmm. sell more this holiday season yeah. than all the rest of these games combined. But right? also, Nintendo so. and Metroid Prime Four might be done, and they might just be sitting. Like, they just, I, they will like just sit on a game for a year and yeah. feel no urgency to release it. Yeah, uh, the the Arkham trilogy got announced. Oh my god! Uh, so Listen, that's there's for one me. guy. There's one guy that's who's like, fuck oh, yeah. oh, that CJ, is for you're me. The one. Oh my god! I have been waiting for this since the Switch launched. You've been waiting why specifically f- to play these games. <laughs> like, why the fuck? No, no. Why the fuck did the Wii U get a, a port of Arkham City and not the fucking Switch? Why did it take like six <laughs> years into this console's life cycle? Oh man. Night's gonna run like ass on that thing. It's gonna blow my switch up, and I'm gonna be there day one. Motherfuckers, are you kidding me? I cannot Holy. wait to hear your thoughts on Arkham Knight on Switch. That's I love Arkham weird. Knight to death. Like, I, like that's like yeah. my favorite of the trilogy. Oh, I it's Unreal Three. I'm sure it's scalable. Yeah, you know I'm saying they'll probably get it. Yeah, like, running, they'll probably get it running like fine. Right. I mean, it was a There's, PS4 game. Like it'll it'll, it'll be okay. It was a base one game. It, yeah. it'll do sub 900p 30 frames per second easily right um but still like that's like you're right that's the one for me that's the one for me um what else that mario rpg remake looks delightful like the art style is incredible i like that everyone's kind of compressed a bit like they all look like they're tiny versions of like themselves um what is it the super mario uh bros wonder like that's the game of the year right there 100 percent. i'm all in um what else was shown off I feel like there's a billion things that were there that were not. There was uh, a pigeon or bird game <laughs> at Bangers Rhythm Royale. Uh, that that was unhinged. Like whatever <laughs> that was, it. I, I just thought, don't know. A real thing. I thought I imagined that, but I'm looking at the list here, and it it was announced. It's a thing that exists. 
someone's gonna pick that up and one two switch uh sequel or whatever and have a real good fucking they're gonna, time they're, gonna they're gonna waste their vouchers on those two games <laughs> Uh, I'm just but Super through. Mario Wonder is in a lot of ways to me like I mean obviously it's a standout yeah. of the direct it was the one more thing mm-hmm. you know and like no new Kirby that that, that feels weird because I thought right. they said they'd have more right to mm-hmm. show and maybe they, I don't know I mean we'll have yeah, they'll do a direct Kirby direct or something yeah yeah I don't know about that but you know <laughs> but like everyone's made the joke already that Super Mario Wonder seems like the thing that um like we've all made the jokes about mushrooms for years and they finally did some and mushrooms drug. Oh my God, dude, you stumble onto something. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, CJ. Leave me alone. But, um, but like the game looks good. I didn't vibe with it at first because aesthetically, like it, it, it did, it didn't hit right at first, but I'm kind of into how whimsical and weird and like unafraid to be that, that it is. Um, I love that for once it's like, there's a lot of playable characters and you, it's not just like, yeah, we have Mario and Luigi and some fucking off color toads, like peach and Daisy are there. That's great. You love to see that. I'd love to see like Wario, Waluigi, Rosalina, some others in there. Um, you know, it's like the power ups are, are weird and different. um, the the level design looks unhinged and, and like something that like you're the not going to know like weird crawling worm things. You're not going to, if you're coming into this with like, I know how Mario works, like the piranha plant popping out of the pipe and running at you. Like this is, this is not something that's built on just being super Mario brothers three, but 3d again, like, this is trying to be something new. And I appreciate the, that. The the new super series, the problem with like, they're fine platform. I think I was a bit too hard on them. Like on our last stream, but like I, I think their problem is they're like incredibly like kind of complacent. They are like the most like milk toast. Like all right, what what yeah. what, what whatever you think Mario is, it's exactly that. Um, like I don't know if you guys seen like the up close comparisons between like the the new supermodels and like this these models. Like they're kind of no, I didn't like, see. Did somebody oh, like post like a direct comparison? Um, Gore, I, I, I've I've been talking to John about this. Like I've been sending him like so many. Like this is my this is like, this is like the most excited I've been for a game in a while. I'll post it in the um in the Discord chat. But it, it it they it looks like they're pulling from like the what is it like the N sixty four models a lot. Like Mario looks really expressive. He has like a different like uh, you know, I'm posting it right now. He has like he's a little bit, he's like like rounder pudgier. Like, yeah, like yeah. you know, as opposed to like this weird lean like version that he looks. He's really uh, expressive, right? Yes. In a way that like the old illustrations are. Um, and that was my fear, right? Because the two point five D stuff like usually doesn't. I don't like two point five D platformers that much, with the exception of um, Tropical Freeze. That that Sonic Superstars has me worried a bit, but whatever. Um, but this looks like a true. I, it's too early to say whether or not it'll be like the, the true success to, to to Mario World because like I don't think any game will ever be. Yeah. Um I just, but, I, I'm hoping it's its own thing, right? Like right. it looks like it's trying to be weird and different in itself and I I appreciate that. Um the only problem is like what is it? it comes up the same day as Spider-Man and it just confirmed that I'm not buying Spider-Man day 1. <laughs> I'm not, um like I I I'm, I'm my you all know where my loyalties lie <laughs> with like uh, with, with this kind of thing. CJ, I thought you'd want to like uh, help the police set up radio towers in in uh, <laughs> yeah, fucking what Queens. Is it, what is it? A uh, like throw smoke bombs at uh, protesters? Tell <laughs> with the venom. Somehow him having the symbiote just makes him even more like of a cop. <laughs> He's gonna put a, a fucking thin blue line across the venom suit. Oh no! <laughs> I I don't know. I'm just like like I said. This direct was like wasn't that great but the the mario rpg and mario wonder like were like these two really big highlights i never played the original release of mario rpg i was kind of bummed that i'm kind of bummed it's not coming to um nso because that would have been free but right well that's why it's not right right but i'll take this talk (laughs) yeah but i'll take i'll take this like a brand new is it square Mm -hmm. is are they involved that's my thing because there's they have to be they have to be because they're um, a big part of the reason why like, um, Nintendo hasn't done much. Well, I mean, and it's not like we don't know that Nintendo has tried either, right? But Square Enix has to be involved. So, so I, I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna have like the secret, like the FF like boss that they had in, in, in Mario RPG. If they're gonna like find some way to incorporate that, 
Um, you know, I, I can't wait to see how wonderful and deep and like innovative Gino is as a character. Cause you know, the way Mario RPG fans talk about him, I'm sure he has to be like the greatest video game character ever made, right? No. All right. <laughs> no, he's just a He's fucking, not worthy of being in Smash. Are you serious? A bunch what? of a bunch of seven year olds thought he was the coolest shit ever. That's really what it boils down Have to. Have you seen that the hard drive uh headline like of our RPG fans excited to finally play the game for the first time? Yeah. They finally found a non earthbound game to use that with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. Um but yeah, like this is just weird because like it simultaneously like Nintendo is dropping a bunch of stuff into the back half of this year that pads out like an already very busy second half of the year. Right. And some of us are trying to get through Diablo and final fantasy still, right. I've not put a lot of time into street fighter. This is a rough year, but at the same time, there's still that part of me that wants to be like, but where to meet at, you know, I'm curious since we like we're like at the last like you know few minutes like what's what's next for you guys as far as like your your most anticipated game of the year because we've gotten like how many other announcements we got the Ubisoft stuff God, that was like so last much. week we got the summer game like so what's like everyone's like confirmed like 100 percent like it's coming out this year like with the data. like to not be unfaithful to Final Fantasy 16 but yeah right right exactly yeah. well, 16's out right you know. but you know right I'm, I'm five hours in. Right. Um, for me, my game is probably uh my my guaranteed hit is City Skylines Two. Um, I was just talking about playing Ano earlier, so that that one I'll enjoy. But I think uh two big ones for me: Baldur's Gate Three. Um, I've never played the Baldur's Gate series. It's something I've always admired, and I have friends who play it. Um, I've just heard so many good things, and I've been waiting so long for this to hit final release. And I've got a few friends and we're actually going to play the campaign together. And I've never played a game like that all the way through with with friends. I'm I'm not really like a, a social gamer. So um, I think that'll be pretty exciting. We're going to like set aside one day a week and we're going to do our little campaign through there. Um, but Starfield's like probably my big one. I've been up and down on this game. I'm still I, I'm fine with the Beth, Bethesda jank. I fucking love Morrowind, Skyrim, Fallout. Like, I don't care if the game's broken as hell. I'm still going to find my own fun and have a good time um but but starfield i think that uh i was surprised i did not think they were going to sell me on that that one hour uh presentation they did the xbox thing it just like is the game like even if the main story fucking sucks even if the quests are broken i am gonna like have a great time just building my own starship and customizing it and just kind of hanging out and chilling and enjoying the vibe so i'm i'm super stoked for that one what about you Britt? your most anticipated game of the year so far, like that, that's that been like shown off and like with like confirmed um, and everything. 16 is my favorite so far. Um, that's like the, just the big one I was looking forward mm -hmm. to. Um, and the next one I think is um, Stray Gods. It's the role play musical game. That oh, they yeah. Are releasing. I really I excited about for that. that. What is that? What's it called? Who's, who's developing that again? Um, Stray Gods. Yeah. Summerfall Studios. Summerfall. Okay. Cuz yeah, I was that that was at like one of the one of the was that at one of the Xbox events. I don't remember. Um Mary I just remember Elizabeth loving the art Weinstein's style. In it? Oh no. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong. I'm sorry. Ignore me. <laughs> but Yeah, yeah, that is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. You you're like combining some fucking uh not necessarily like noir because obviously it's way too colorful, but a lot of the aesthetics are like super, super cool. Like kind of looks like a wolf among us. Yeah. 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 A little bit, a little bit. I don't know. It's I thought gorgeous. the same thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard for me to look past final fantasy 16 <laughs> because it's the one that's the like, game. <laughs> it's not, it's not out yet to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like if if I'm if I'm if I'm required by technicality to move past it, um, I don't know. There's there's a lot coming, but most of it's not stuff I'm stupid hyped for. I guess I would say Spider Man too. Um, as like somebody who you know I love mm -hmm. love 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 Spider Man. I always have. Um, you love law you know, enforcement. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, everybody knows me. Um, you know, big. I think. Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling like. 
not cold on that one, but like it. I don't know if it's just because it looks so familiar. Like I know once I'm playing it, I'll probably have a good yeah. time. Eric, I don't know if you're the same way. Like I like. I feel like I'm excited for it on principle, but not yeah. in reality. Like you right? kind of have to be because it's Spider-Man. Yeah, because I and because the the first one and and the Miles Morales. Yeah, game were both so good that like I know I have to be, but like I was the same way with Last of Us Two. Where like right. I knew it was going to be good, but I I didn't want, like there was a disconnect up until the game was in my hands. Mm-hmm. So, um, but like yeah, I don't know. There's a lot coming, but a lot of a lot of what's coming. Like everyone's so hyped for Starfield, and I'm so outside the like audience for that game. Yeah, you know. So, um, Alan Wake two. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's going to be sick. Oh, man, that's going to be sick. That, I, did you know, I, I, that's, I keep forgetting the same, that, that's launching the same week as Spider-Man two and super Mario bros. Wonder. I kept, Fucking. I keep forgetting that a lot of these games are even out this year because none of it's real. And 2023 <laughs> is not a real year. So well, Alan Wake two felt like one of those games that like was kind of announced for this year, but I think probably a lot of us were like, not going to be surprised if it ended up being, 2024 until we started finally seeing some stuff from it um i'm surprised that one's making this fall and i i mean like i hope it does well uh it's i'm curious to see like how that's gonna do commercially i guess because i like outside of the online sphere where everyone loves alan wake i don't know a single person who knows what alan wake is Um, that's pretty niche but yeah you know, I love it, but that's remedies, remedies, good people. So of course I, I hope it, I hope it does well for them. Yeah. I think are, are the rest of y'all experiencing a little bit of burnout? Like, yeah, I know that's yeah. a, that's a, that's a stupid rhetorical question to yes, ask, but bro, like, I hate video games so fucking much. I have to play them. I want to There's so much this year and I, I almost need it to stop. My brain's broken. Cause I've only played stuff I review now and it hurts me, but you know, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's I wouldn't just say not the same experience. burnout, but I'm like, it's why I haven't started 16. I'm being very uh, deliberate in what I play and when I play it, because like, I know, for example, like CJ was talking about, like, I'm not gonna fucking play this game in 70 hours. Like, I know I can't do two 70 hour back to back games. I just finished my Breath of the Wild replay and someone gifted me Tears of the Kingdom. And Oof, no, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm, I can't go into this right after coming off Breath of the Wild. I just know um, I can't do it. And so I'm because yeah like i if i was just trying to play everything as it came out like holy fuck like it it doesn't sound fun <laughs> yeah yeah if like a burnout game came out uh, that would cure my burnout 100 <laughs> where fucking where's the earpiece is finn feeding you lines like no no hold up hold up can we uh there we go that's me right now i hate that that discord gave him this power <laughs> I think this I'm podcast is over. Okay, it's over. It's over. I was going to say, if I, mute, if I mute CJ, does it mute his soundboard? Try it. <laughs> no. Oh, mute soundboard is a separate option. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that works. Thank God. <laughs> right. God damn, CJ. Can you're gonna drive me up, the podcast? <laughs> you're going to drive me up a fucking wall, man. CJ is just now like the fucking Andy Richter of the podcast. <laughs> God. Yes, fuck flir- it. Flirting with uh, with girls half my age on Twitter. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh. All right. Good night, everybody. Boom. Good night, everybody. All right. Folks, uh, I don't have an outro thing. I'm not John. We should have just gone with good night, everybody. Go play Final Fantasy 16, everybody. It's out. Yeah. Bye. (laughs) Well, that's what we ended with.